Hello! So in this video, I'm going to be walking through how you can use Ancestry Library Edition. Now, I wanted to spotlight Ancestry Library Edition because until the end of August of 2020, and possibly longer, Ancestry keeps extending this, Ancestry is accessible from home with your library card. And because Ancestry is one of our neatest, most interesting resources, it really seemed like something that was worth spotlighting and drawing some attention to. So now is a really good opportunity to just play around with the resource and see what you can find in it. So Ancestry is sort of the premier resource for genealogy, and it's almost synonymous with genealogy. But don't let that make you think that it's strictly for genealogy people. There's a lot of stuff that can be, and I speak from personal experience, if you're not particularly into that, that just kind of illuminate your family history, where you came from, can give you sort of a snippet into the life or a, a snapshot into the life of, of distant family, um, give you an idea of sort of the historical background um, of your ancestors. And it, it's, it's kind of neat. It's something, and it's certainly something you can share at family gatherings and makes for uh, an interesting story. So I'll walk you through how you can access Ancestry from home or from wherever you have the internet. And uh, then we'll get into how you do a search and find your ancestors. So let's get started. To access Ancestry through the library, go to the library's website at mgpl.org. Along the top of the page, hover your mouse cursor over resources. In the drop down menu, click on databases. On the databases page, Ancestry is listed right near the top. Simply take your mouse cursor and click on Ancestry Library Edition. Using Ancestry outside of the library will open up a new tab prompting you for your library card number. Enter your library card number and click log in to get started. So this is Ancestry's landing page. While you might be tempted to begin searching right away, you might want to take a look at some of the quick links that are available here. One thing to notice in particular is the Learning Center, which is available at the top of the page. There you'll find sort of guides and quick tips for doing genealogy, finding ancestors, and navigating the kinds of documents you're going to find here. To begin searching, though, we can click the green button in the middle of the page. So here we're looking at Ancestry search page. Now, as you can see, there's fields for first and middle name, last name, birth year, and place an ancestor might have lived, the idea is to hone in on this ancestor and the records that Ancestry has on them. So searching from here, doing a general search in Ancestry searches across all the records in Ancestry and is generally the best place to start. You can go to individual record sets if you'd like. That's more if you have a more specific need or if you're looking for a specific document that you suspect is in there. This is the best place to start for most people. It's very effective and very user-friendly. So let's talk about searching in Ancestry and actually do a search to see how it works. So generally speaking, my first piece of advice in Ancestry is to go more broad with your search terms than you might think you should. Start generally. You'll probably get overwhelming results, but that's okay because you can drill down. So let's search for an ancestor of mine, right? So let's, let me put in a name here by clicking the first and last name fields. As you can see, when I entered this name, under both the first and last name fields, a checkbox appeared. This is exact. So with this, you can kind of tune how Ancestry searches for your ancestor's name. Now, so... If I had exact selected, for instance, it will look only for, in, across its document record, only for the name Nancy um, and not for, say, the initial N next to a last names. Or in the case of a name like William, it will only look for William, if I had William put in here, and not, you know, a shortened version of it like Will. It would miss that. Another reason I suggest that people start broad is that if you get too exact, you are likely to miss relevant results. So better to start broad, overly broad than overly exact. So I'm going to leave this one blank or not select any of those options. Uh, and for the last name, I'm going to do the same. For birth year, I know Nancy was born in about 1932, but I'm not positive. 
you'll see when I enter the year, another sort of checkbox appears. Clicking that lets you kind of select a range around that year that Ancestry will search. I'm going to select plus or minus two years. Seems reasonable. Seems like it won't overwhelm my results. Finally, I have to select a place the, my ancestor might have lived. I know Nancy lived in Illinois. So I'm going to start typing. And as you type, Ancestry will populate suggestions. Illinois, USA is one of them. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to begin my search by clicking search. So these are my search results. And all search results in Ancestry should look essentially like this or be broken down in the same way. In the left-hand column, uh, the top box, search filters, is a place you can adjust your search filters. So you can see next to the information I, I entered, there is a slider from broad to exact. If you, I were to slide any of these towards exact, Ancestry would look more strictly at just what I entered and not take a more interpretive approach or look for things that were variations of them or within a range that was close to them. So for instance, if I were to Illinois, USA, which is the place I put in that she lived, if I were to drag this slider from broad to exact and then update my search results, that would look strictly at Illinois and not at adjacent states or the country in general. If I were to do the same with 1932 and drag that more towards exactly, it would uh, it would look just at the year 1932 as a probable birth year and not at, at the range that I selected. Uh, and conversely, dragging it more towards broad would increase that range. Below the search filters column is a way to filter by filter your results by the type of record. You can see there's census and voter lists, birth and birth, marriage and death, military records. Clicking in any of these categories will take you to all of the documents that are that comprise that category. So moving on, the right, the wider column along the right, is where you're going to have the records that are your results. Along the top, oftentimes you'll have a sort of suggestion. It'll pull from the family trees that are in Ancestry a an individual that it that Ancestry has concluded is possibly or probably your, the ancestor you're looking for. And there'll be a sort of a profile picture here if the family tree has a picture associated with the person. They pulled for me Nancy Sue Billings, and that's not the person I'm looking for. Uh, but to be fair, if I'd entered more specific search terms and filtered better, it might have found uh, the Nancy blank that I'm looking for. But anyway, below that sort of suggestion for the person you're looking for, you'll find your, your results, the records that are your results. Along the right of your results, you'll sort of see a snapshot for each individual record of the information contained within. So if I click this first result, you can click the title, which is in blue, to see what's in the record. And you'll see the information contained within. A lot of these are extracts, are just text extracts from a document. And, uh, and you'll see the information listed here. If you find something valuable or useful or interesting uh, in one of these records, one of these sort of test text extracts, you can uh, send the document, email the document to yourself. So with this one, once I have it pulled up, say I find this, this is in fact the Nancy Blank I'm looking for. So uh, I want to keep this information uh, from my record. So if you want to do that, you can, along the right-hand side, select send document, it's sort of an orange button. And here you just enter an email address, entering it and then confirming it and then clicking send email will send you that information and you can pull it up in your email. So I'm going to X out of here. I'm going to return to my results by clicking the all results button with a sort of blue arrow at the top of the page. So looking at my other results, you'll see some records that have an image attached to them. The, the record is an image and might also have text extracted from it as well. So you can see here, there's a document titled or from Oregon State Marriages, 1906 to 1966. Clicking the title will show you the information extracted from the image. And if you actually click view, you'll see a photo of the file. 
With an image open in Ancestry, you can zoom in and zoom out with the plus and minus buttons along the right-hand side of the page to increase visibility or to get a broader view of the image. Another option I have to mention here is that you can save the images you find, the records you find, directly to your computer device. To do that, take your mouse cursor to the upper right-hand portion of the screen, to the green Save button, click that, and that'll bring up a pop-up menu. In that pop-up menu, select Your Computer. That'll save it right on your device. Now to get back to the sort of text extract of the record, you can click in the upper left-hand corner of the page, the sort of chevron or arrow, and that'll take you back. So sometimes in Ancestry, when you pull up a record, such as this time, you'll get a box with suggested records. These are records that match by name, by geographic location, the person who's at the heart or who is the subject of the document you currently have open. These are often a great thing to mine, assuming the document you pulled up is for the right person or appears to be for the person you are indeed searching for. These are often right on the money and will, will be other records for that person great thing to mind if you found something that is indeed on the person you're looking for. Also related is you'll notice sometimes a record such as this one will have blue links for the various family members. If I were to click on any of these links, it would sort of, it would pull up the same image file and show me the record from their perspective sort of, but that would give me suggested links to them. And for that person specifically. So if I clicked on Don Charles Taylor, it would give me other records that would seem to be that same Don Charles Taylor. Quick aside, one thing uh, that I find is interesting uh, and uh, I've done a few times in Ancestry is if you are having a hard time looking, finding records for a specific person is finding in Ancestry records for their spouse, for their children. Because oftentimes through records like this, you'll be able to, you won't be able to find it by searching for the target by the subject specifically, but you will be able to find them more information about their life by clicking the suggested records when you find, you know, a record that has both them and their spouse that for some reason didn't come up when you searched specifically for the subject, but it does come up for the spouse. A lot of that has to do I suspect Ancestry, keep in mind, uh, uses an algorithm to read, you know, print and written notes and documents that is imperfect. So sometimes it will have transcriptions of names wrong, so it won't read them right, and uh, your search results will be off that way. So <laughs> bit of, a bit of a long aside here, but my point being is that if you can't find the person you're looking for, find their spouse, find their children, and oftentimes clicking on these records and clicking the suggested records, you'll be able to get information about them through the others around them. Anyway, let's go back to our results. So I should mention that last record I pulled up, not still not the Nancy Blank I'm looking for. I just wanted to pull it up as a means to demonstrate the image files and all that stuff around it. So let's say you want to reevaluate your search or you want to tweak it. Um, looking at the results I've gotten and comparing it to what I know about the person I'm looking for, I'm seeing a lot of results that are from states outside of Illinois, a lot from Texas, for instance. And I know um, that the person I'm looking for almost certainly didn't live in Texas. I also realized um, that the last name I'm searching for is uh, Nancy's uh, married name and not her maiden name, and that might be impacting my results. So I've decided I want to tweak my search. Um, to do that, again, you can use these filters, or rather these uh, this, these sliders, to, to, to kind of switch between broad and exact. You can also do edit search. So I'm going to click edit search. And like I said, um, the geographic area seems to be too broad. Um, I'm almost positive Nancy lived most, if not her entire life, in Cook County. So I'm going to search the county of Cook. Illinois, USA, and I'm going to limit it to exactly here. Not, I'm going to, yeah, exactly to this place in the pop-up menu. And I'm going to switch uh, her name, her last name, to her maiden name. And, uh, and that's another thing just generally to be aware of in Ancestry is sometimes Ancestry can, if you put in a, a married name, 
versus a made a, a married name or a maiden name, it will kind of know to suggest the other. Oftentimes it won't, so it's it very much uh, is to your benefit to use both or to try both searches. And I'm going to try searching again. So looking at my new search results, right away I noticed that the matching person, still not right, but generally these results look a lot better. And I noticed the top record, the birth date seems correct for the ancestor I'm looking for. So tweaking your results based on what seems wrong, uh, changing the limiters, uh, changing how exact the searches for these can make a big impact and doing it sort of strategically based on what's wrong in your initial results is a good way to hone in on the person you're looking for. This is something that comes more with experience than you'll just, uh, I can just instill intuitively, but um, something to be aware of. So once your results start to look, and your results will never all be, will rarely all be the a complete listing strictly of the person you're looking for. Most names are common enough where you'll get other people in there as well. But once you get results where you're getting a lot of hits for that seem like the correct person, um, it it would behoove you to check out along the left-hand side in the filter by section in the categories to check out the family trees. Here, you can take a look at the family trees that have been made by members of Ancestry. And if you look using the names and birth dates along the right for your ancestor. I see Nancy Williams, this one, the Bishop and Danny family tree, that seems like the right person. Basically by going to these family trees, you could sort of have someone do the work for you and they'll have a record for the ancestor. If you can find it oftentimes anyway, they're not, not everybody's in here, but many are. Um, someone will have linked that person to all the documents they could find of, of them on Ancestry, as well as link them to their spouse, their children, their parents. And from here, I, for instance, um, could click on her spouse uh, to get all the documents connected to him, as well as his parents uh, and um, the censuses he was in. Um, her record was uh, maybe not the best example because it was <laughs> fairly limited, uh, but um, this is a great way to find, generally a great way to uh, save time and uh, pull up records that other people have found. Be aware, though, that because these are member-made, uh, you will find errors in them, uh, and they are not verified. Uh, so um, I don't want to say take them with a grain of salt, but uh, uh, don't trust them, you know, absolutely uh, to be correct. Sometimes there will be records incorrectly uh, tied to uh, an ancestor. So double-check that, but a huge time saver and a great way to mine information with minimal effort. So doubling back to those revised search results from just a moment ago, uh, I just wanted to show that not all the results you get in Ancestry are just censuses and uh, birth records and uh, death indexes. There's some, some kind of fun stuff too. So um, I looked through these results and I um, went if going, if I go to the shortcut, the category for directories and members lists along the left-hand side, I noticed there are a bunch of yearbook photos. A lot of these weren't the person I was looking for, but some of them were, including this one. And if I click on the record, that is distinctly the ancestor I was looking for. Click view, I get the full yearbook page. Um, so you can find, so I found the Ancestors High School uh, and uh, this yearbook is scrollable. So, and this is a Chicago land uh, yearbook from apparently 1947. Showed this to some family members uh, and they were very impressed and uh, 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 you know, very happy to see this. So there's some fun uh, memories to be had here. So I should really wrap this video up, um, but hopefully it was helpful hope, uh, and uh, hopefully you learned some strategies you can use uh, to sort of go from one ancestor to another or to find a difficult to pin down one and to maybe save you time uh, in finding some fun resources uh, to flesh out your family tree. Just to reiterate, you should be able to access Ancestry from home until the end of August of 2020 and quite possibly even longer. Normally, uh, Ancestry has a fairly hefty uh, 
subscription fee. So this is a great way to save money to try it out. There's a reason Ancestry uh, costs a fair bit when you have an individual subscription. It's because people like it, and it's a fairly good resource. It's popular. People find interesting stuff on there, and they like it. So this is a way to do it on the free, and why not take advantage of that? Finally, I should mention that if you're having trouble finding a particular ancestor or the sort of resources you want in Ancestry, we're happy to take a crack at it. If you go to our website and submit a book, a librarian request, or else just contact us via phone or email. Um, I'm our dilettante amateur genealogist, and I would be happy to take a crack at it and see if I can find some, um, some stuff in Ancestry to help you flesh out your family tree. Thanks for watching and happy genealogying.